Hi, this is Trevor Conkergood. Welcome to this week's RNK Software Club's video for the week. And our topic for this week is about the photo to stitches tool, which is how you can create a beautiful embroidery design from a photograph that you take with your own phone. And so to get started, um, I have a uh, example on my screen of a design of a cute little baby uh, that's been done using the photo to stitches tool. And so let's go ahead and show you how I made that. Um, essentially, I'm going to start an empty workspace and the tool is up here. It's in this purple tool group at the top. It says photo to stitches. And when I click on it, it gives me uh, a, a, the ability to browse my computer and essentially find the photo. Um, I'm looking in my you know pictures folder where I've got a, a photograph of a baby laying in a pink bed. And so when I open up that photograph, it tells me information like how big it is. And it's currently 20 inches by 13. Um, I don't have a hoop that size. And so if I want to be able to sew it all in one hooping, I best tell it to make it smaller kind of thing. And I could come in here and say, no, no, not 20 inches. You know, how about 12 uh, or, or, you know, or 14? I know the hoops are getting pretty big these days. Um, the one thing I will say is the bigger you make your photo stitch, the more stitches it will be. Um, but then, of course, the more details that it will be able to pick up from your photograph. And so they don't always turn out super great in really small sizes. And typically, we'd like to make as large of a photo stitch as possible. Now, the next question is about the actual shape of the photograph. And do you want to crop any of it out? And there are handles on the screen if you want to go ahead, you know, and kind of get rid of, you know, parts of the baby, uh, you know, of the photo, you can, you can just, uh, you know, kind of drag the handles to reduce the um, area of the picture. Um, this is based on a box, but you could also have it based upon a heart shape, an oval shape, you know, a triangle. Um, you can even uh, choose custom and then you'll have to kind of like click to draw the shape. And so you, if you had a car in a parking lot and you just really wanted to get the car and not have any parts of the, you know, the parking lot, you could cut it out you know, kind of thing. And you would, you know, you can uh, take your time and, you know, do it as, I guess, as uh, accurately as you want to. But um, essentially, it's not until I uh, right click that it makes the mask, you know, and that, if I said next, then that could be the embroidery, it would make the embroidery of just that little part, you know, that I, I kind of cut out. But if you're like, oh, that's silly, why did I do that? You can click back. So you've got a back button and the next button to kind of navigate through this little wizard. Um, if you don't like the custom, you can say, no, no, let's just go back to oval and let's do an oval that includes, you know, better part of the baby kind of thing. And so now um, I'm happy with the size. Uh, it says it's 20 inches wide, but now that I've kind of cropped it a little bit, it's about 19. Well, basically it's the same. It says it's 13 inches tall, but I shortened it a bit. So it's actually going to be, um, you know, in the end, it would make it around 19 by 12. Um, if you're like, no, that's still too big, then tell this the maximum size is 14. And then it'll figure out in here when you click apply, okay, that's 13 and a bit by eight and a bit. And so that will be the finished embroidery size kind of thing. So basically com uh, combining the uh, finished or the actual size that you give up here with the uh, mass that you make will create the actual finished size of the embroidery right here. And so when I'm happy with all that and I say next, it's going to show me, I guess, what it will look like. Um, this is what it will look like based upon the uh, parameters that are on my screen right now. And so the first one would be the number of colors. So uh, based on a maximum of 32 colors, that can be turned up uh, as high as 60, which will, of course, give the software more colors uh, to, to choose from and uh, put into your picture. Uh, you may want to go the other way. Uh, what about 20, you know, because um, it takes time, N you know, not necessarily more stitches, but more threads to find and more times to stop and change them. And so you can, uh, you know, try four colors and see what it would look like in the, in an Andy Warhol kind of posterized look, you know, and if you don't like that, that's fine. Just put a, put them back. You know, you can type in 20 colors and click apply and it will find um, 20 colors from your photograph. Um, it's currently basing everything on the Floriani polyester thread chart. If you need to use a different thread chart, you can click here and all of the thread charts that the software has are available 
Um, so basically now it will use, you know, whatever thread chart I, I pick to choose the thread charts, you know, the colors for, you know, the 30 or 20 colors will be based upon this thread chart. Um, this is for full color, but you, it does have the ability to do uh, a gray scale. So now we'll have um, 20 shades of gray uh, or 20 shades of sepia tone. Um, if you choose monotone, it will turn it into a single sort of shade with varying uh, uh, degrees of density. Um, and so you can just simply choose between these options with the little uh, drop down menu here. And so we'll go back to color and 20 colors. And there are two different types of stitching that can be created. This first one is called curvilinear and the second one is called crossover. Um, if I change to crossover and click apply, it will look different. Um, essentially, uh, curvilinear does a small sort of serpentine uh, sort of stipple. Um, crossover does kind of a back and forth, back and forth hatching effect. Both of them are filling in the full same photograph with the same number of colors, just the way the threads move, I guess, is what's changed. And so you can choose between the two styles, curvilinear or crossover. Um, you have the ability to change the stitch length. So the longer the stitch, uh, the less the number of stitches and the shorter the stitch, then the, um, sh the, the more the number of stitches. And I guess the, uh, presumably the more detail in your picture uh, can be picked up by having a smaller stitch length. And so there is a quality setting, uh, three being the best, uh, one being the least. That kind of refers to the density and how close the rows are together. Um, and finally, uh, do you want a border, you know, around your design? Uh, could be a steel stitch border, an applique border, or no border. Um, you can play with these things back and forth, uh, you know, go back, uh, uh, you know, apply any new parameters. Uh, but when you're done, you have two options. One is to click finish and make the embroidery design. The other one is to click save as. That is how I made the image that I had on the screen at the beginning that's behind us here. Uh, that's the one that you could email to your mom and say, uh, what do you think of my new photo stitch? And finish will actually make the embroidery. So save as makes a JPEG picture. Uh, clicking finish will actually make the embroidery design. When I click finish, the window will go away and the embroidery design will you know, appear on my screen. And so essentially it can be kind of as easy as that. You uh, select your photograph and uh, you apply the photo to stitches filter. Um, of course, um, finding a photograph that has uh, colors that help separate your subject from the background uh, can help. Otherwise things start to blend into each other and it's harder to find the, you know, the definition that you're looking for. Um, of course, when the photograph is in your phone uh, or in your camera and on your computer, you have all kinds of different um, photo filter effects that you can apply to your photos. And then of course, bring them over to Floriani to apply them into thread. And so we hope you enjoyed this week's RNK Software Club's video for the week on the topic of using the photo to stitches tool. Until next week, have a great day and bye for now.